Well, thanks so much uh, for joining us today. It's our latest Take a Seat interview and it's brilliant. I'm really looking forward to hearing more from Amy uh, about her role at DPNL and all the different things that she gets up to. Um, in in the kind of the, the, the typical scheme of things, we've managed to schedule this when Amy's just had her second job. So she's doing really well so far. <laughs> um, and, and you can't tell, but there'll, be, there'll maybe be one arm moving in and the other one is not going to shift, is it? <laughs> Um, and, you know, Amy, when we look back, I think when we look back at all these interviews that I've been doing over the last kind of 16 months, we will definitely all wonder how on earth we survived it. But oh, yeah, um, definitely. thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this for us today. I do really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No, you're very welcome. Um, so let's just kind of kick off. Let's hear a wee bit about, uh, tell us a bit about you and what you do. So I'm Amy Anderson. Um, I am one of the travel managers at DPNL Travel. DPNL Travel um, look after um, travel for businesses. Um, we've also got a leisure shop in St Andrews, which um, I am one of the managers for. Um, we have a very long um, history dating back to 1826, um, where we were shipping industry and involved in travel way back then as well. <laughs> Um, my job within within there is to um, make sure that um, our um, corporates are um, well looked after um, by providing reservation services as well as um, account management. Um, I'm also involved in the business development side of the as the business, so that involves um, you know networking, meeting new people, as well as looking at ways that the business itself can develop as well. Um, whether that's through technology, marketing, um, or business operations as well. And so I'm asking everybody, tell us what you like best about what you do. Is there a story to that? Um, I mean, there's a story to travel. Um, I've always, always loved travel. I couldn't tell you when I didn't. Um, I had, I remember this um, atlas I had when I was a kid, and um, it it gave it just sort of it was of everything um but it also showed like ple um platonic plates and things like that and i've also got an interest in that as well um, and i remember it having flags and i just remember i was probably from the age of about five maybe six i was always with this book um i loved how you could get how to get from a to b and things like that um and i also loved the sort of the, the culture side of things so this this book as well also had you know, this is this is the culture side of things in this country, and I just absolutely just had a passion for it. Um, I think now I'm very um, I'm into my maps. I'm really into my maps. If I was in, I've actually built a home office under my stairs um, during lockdown, but it's a bit echoey, so I thought probably not best. But yeah, I've actually got old maps in there um, from. 1790 I think it is oh, yeah. um another one from 1830 I'm a bit um yeah I'm a bit of a geek like that so but yeah I've always enjoyed sort of the problem solving of how to get from x to y um and everything in between obviously that's a bit more of a challenge just now with covid but you know I still I still really embrace it but I also think because um I've got um different sort of sides to my role so I'm a manager so I like enjoy being part of the team and leading the team, but also my business development hat on. I do love getting out and socialising um, and sort of being able to provide solutions to to, to businesses um, and actually going in and meeting them and understanding their needs and actually just going, do you know what? Here's something. And you just see the, the light, them light up. Um, so, yeah, I really, really there's there's many different sides to my job that I do enjoy. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh no, I, I love that the story of the atlas and um, and then your maps and things. Well, you maybe end up with a map that worth worth a fortune. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I did think I was quite surprised when it was um, last summer. We did a road trip up to Inverness. Uh, well, stayed in Inverness and went to Sky and things like that. But there was a little bookshop. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's quite a famous one actually. Um, and they had. It was all old books and they also then had boxes upon boxes upon boxes of maps. You're lucky that I only got away with two. Um, <laughs> one of which, well, I was like, I have to get it because it was um, a map of 
the train stations, but it was from um, like the northeast of Scotland where I'm from. So it had and it even had the little tiny, tiny little village that I grew up in. So I was like, I have to have that. I have to get that. And then the other one that I bought was um, of the German region, sort of back in the 1700s. Um, and I was a bit of a history buff at school. So I kind of and we did cover a lot to do with um, sort of, of German, the German area of your like and unification and things like that. So I was very much like, no, I have to get that one as well. But I think at one point I probably had about 10 in my hand. So <laughs> um, that would have been quite expensive. But uh, yeah, um, I had to narrow it down to two. Yeah, well, you'll just have to go back. <laughs> I'll have to, yeah. Um, so I'm asking everybody just, I mean, work questions, but also a wee bit of random question, just so that we kind of get a wee peek at, at what people are like. So this one is a random one, isn't it? But what is your favourite time of year and why? Um, I quite, I'm probably, I'm a very much an outdoorsy person, so probably would say the sort of spring, summer, autumn type, um, a time, um, but I actually enjoyed this year when it was snowing, um, because we were locked down, I always think, oh god, snow, like, just to get about and everything, it's such a pest, but, mm -hmm. um, it was, it, I think the day it snowed non-stop this year was actually my birthday, and I just remember we went out for a walk at lunchtime and I mean it was so deep it was ridiculous but it was just so pretty and the fact that nobody was about really because it was February it was just so pretty like it was untouched nobody was on the roads or anything like that so I do like a lovely snowy scene but usual times it's a bit of a pest but yeah probably I love nothing better than sit, just sitting outside um even if it's not doing anything, um, even if it's quite cold, I'll sit outside with a jacket. I just like to sit outside with a book or something like that and just get a bit of peace and quiet. So yeah, probably the the sunnier the better, but I don't care if it's too cold or anything like that. And um, so we're recording this, and it's just it. We, it's not Freedom Day in Scotland, but it's it's the the Close week enough. that we've come out of the, the the levels and and different restrictions. But but you know, and we were saying before we started recording, it you know we're we're not quite normal yet, are you? Are we? And I think everybody's now trying to work out. Okay, so what what can I do now? What what's available to me? What so um, I've been asking everybody what they've been missing most during the times that we've been in lockdown and restrictions. So what what would you say that you've missed most or you um, think actually you're still missing? Yeah, I was actually quite surprised. I thought I was going to really suffer because, um, I mean, we are never at home. Um, my family's up in Aberdeenshire. My boyfriend's in Glasgow. So we're always up and down the road, always on the road. With work, I was always out um so I thought oh my god I'm gonna really really struggle being in the house but I actually didn't um it was actually probably quite good for me mentally I wasn't in such a good place so for me mentally it was actually quite good um really got into exercising and sports and things like that but the big thing I probably missed was the socializing more than anything um you know like I say we were, we we're usually up and down to family every other week um my work's very sociable so you know we're very you know as a team we are very sociable but also like obviously I did quite a lot of networking and things like that so again I was always out and about and I was always chatting away so I probably missed that a lot of um was probably the most I missed and seeing like um my um best mate had just not long had a wee boy so I kind of missed out on that and um also had a wee niece um, she she was not long she was a but she had been one as well so we missed out on quite a lot of that as well so um that was probably quite a big thing that you know missed but uh, yeah I think for me actually I was quite surprised at how how positive it was on me um which I didn't never ever could have imagined it would have been <laughs> yeah, yeah it's definitely been a roller coaster hasn't it and the things mm -hmm. that you you thought you might um, struggle with you maybe haven't and other things you know we've gone oh that's yeah I didn't expect that to, mm -hmm. to make me feel um, that way so yeah it's been it's definitely been a challenge isn't it and um, yeah. the other thing obviously that we've been talking about to everybody is is businesses and how businesses have changed 
And clearly everybody's business has changed in some way, shape or form. But what has been the kind of, is there a standout change that's happened in your business since the, the pandemic hit? Um, I don't know if there's been a standout change. I mean, obviously we've absolutely suffered um, ridiculous amount since since um, lockdown happened. So, yeah, I mean, when we first sort of um, sort of last March, um, we had everybody trying to, especially our corporate businesses, trying to cancel. Um, you know, there was people trying to cancel that were leaving the very next day. There was people trying to cancel that was leaving in October. So there was a lot of sort of trying to manage that. Um, and airline policies kept changing all the time. One minute you were only allowed a voucher. One minute you could ref- you could get a full refund. It was just, it was just crazy. Um, so yeah, it took it took probably took about two or three months from March probably to for things to calm down and level out. But also, obviously, as a business, we were just bleeding money. So you know, we had to reduce our staff. So we were having to obviously adapt that adapt to obviously still being quite busy but you know finding ways new ways that we could work you know still as um functionally as possible and providing a really good service so that was a challenge and also obviously having you know we didn't get we didn't furlough everybody but we we still had a few selected members of the team to help um but trying to sort of manage that as well um was quite was quite challenging and you know like i say we're very in every travel um, company that I've worked for, everybody sort of work, ba- passes off of each other. It's they'll ask advice and everything like that. So that was quite a challenge to sort of be like, oh, well, what what do you think this policy means and how does that work? And so that was probably quite, you know, it was quite a difficult challenge to do that. I mean, we managed really well and we got, you know, refunds back that we never thought we would have, but. Um, from the client perspective, that was brilliant. Um, now we've kind of obviously had to change a gear and, you know, think about how we, you know, we sit down with our clients and go, right, how do you start moving? What what tools do you need? What what advice do you need to move forward? So, you know, we it's allowed us time to actually, um, you know, develop tools or take on tools or maybe. Um, you know, we did have a, a sort of obviously a duty of care is a big thing. Um, it's even bigger now. Um, we had tools to sort of do traveller tracking, um, but it wasn't. You know, it it did the trick. Whereas now we've sort of we've taken on a tool that's that's a lot better, um, that will include sort of COVID policies and, and and things like that. So if things change, you can go okay. You know, for example, the, the India I suppose was probably the the biggest one probably that. In recent times and you could go and see who's currently there how right we need to get them out or who was going and things so wow. we've developed we've got this tool in place that that allows for that so that's really good we've also managed to i mean we were stuck we kind of started and we did have an online booking tool um but we've we've managed to kind of polish it off and make sure that it's re- it's good to go so we've kind of had the the time to kind of you know, we've not just sort of sat and gone, right, when's the next booking coming in? We're finding ways that we can, you know, we can make the services that we provide better. Um, and then on the leisure front, you know, we always on social media, we always sort of just did here's an offer, here's an offer, here's an offer. Whereas now we're kind of going, right, OK, no, we need to sell an experience. So it's something that is kind of currently in the pipeline and something that we're working on. So it's... Um, yeah, it's stuff that we're kind of, it's allowed us time to actually, you know, um, improve ourselves, I guess, in a, in a sense to once things kind of get back up and running, we can, we, you know, we're, we're good to go and we can provide an even better service. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, you know, people that don't necessarily know all the different parts of your group will just... Um, you know, look at DPNL as a brand and think, oh, it's just it is just about the the kind of the travel. But um, I know that you know the the there are all sorts of different parts of your group that have and some have have weathered things, you know, in different ways. So mm-hmm. so I guess that's that's a real strength, isn't it, from um, from your guys' perspective? Yeah, yeah, we've been really lucky in the sense. Obviously, we've got key personnel that does the recruitment, and Alison Stephen that does the sort of PPE and workwear and things like that. So 
they they have been extremely busy. So it has allowed us sort of to as for travel to kind of lean on that as support. Um, and yeah, it's kind of given us a lifeline to make sure that we can keep our key members of staff as well. So we've seconded some of them off as well to different parts of the business. So we have been extremely lucky in that in that sense. And what about the future? What does the future hold for the business? Um, I think it will be a case of, you know, finding ways to, from both a B2B and a B2C, to gain customer confidence again. Um, you know, I think that will take time and, you know, that's something that we are sitting with, especially our corporate clients and finding out where they stand and how, you know, how they're going to be moving forward and what they need from us, whether that is, you know, a more hands-on approach you know other than just you know making a booking is that you know sitting there providing advice making sure that we've got a complete package and you know how do we move forward um, and making sure that they you know speak to their staff and you know how how do they approach their staff and and what is required when traveling so just providing all that information really from from that perspective and yeah that the leisure side will just be, I think, once confidence is there, um, which I think has just been absolutely shattered, um, to be honest. So I think once that's there, it, it will will improve. But yeah, it's just a case of getting get to that point. And I think a lot will improve. I mean, we've got quite a lot of corporates traveling now, um, mostly domestic, but, you know, there are a few out there that are traveling um, internationally and it's it, you know, it's a lot more difficult now. Um, you know, there's not as many flights. There's so many restrictions. It changes frequently. There's always cancellations. So, yeah, you know, it's taken a lot longer for, for even us to, to, to make a book in. So it's, you know, we're, it'll be a case of just, you know, how, how do we move forward with our corporates? Um, yeah. And I think you're right about the confidence issue because, you know, people, the people that we're talking to, the corporates we're speaking to are really keen to get out and travel. And I know that there are, you know, we've all been doing all these digital meetings. So I guess, you know, some people will still do some digital meetings, but there are so many people saying that they just really need to get out and see their customers and kind of do deals face to face. So that's where, you know, Uh, kind of coming through you guys and using your expertise is should really be the only way we do it going forward because it's the things are going to change possibly um and so having you guys at their back is is the right way to do it then isn't it yeah um yeah so i mean we basically are there just i mean we don't just book your travel we manage it so you know that is from the point of you know if there's any cancellations any changes which Nine times out of ten now on a booking that will happen. Um, restrictions may change, right? How do we go about that? Is that a case of we can go to the airline and get a full refund for you? Then if that's the case, that's what we'll do. Whereas I think, you know, we've had quite we've we've actually been quite lucky and we have taken on quite a couple of corporate book um, clients throughout lockdown, which we didn't actually expect to happen. And um, we kind of turned that side of business development off because we just thought, well, what's the point? Um, you're kind of flogging a dead horse here but actually there was a lot of people who were traveling for research purposes and things like that so you know there was quite a lot to Africa and things like that and that you know that that was tricky because some were completely shut off and others weren't and you know how do we go about that Um, and then you know just before they I I remember one one booking just before they went to leave the um, red amber green came into place and they were stuck, you know. Um, so that was just before they left. So, you know, we were able to kind of cancel it and get a full refund for them. So it's it's the it's it's having the knowledge, um, and we've got the contacts to kind of, you know, get that that information and hopefully pull pull a full stri- full a couple of strings even. <laughs> um and hopefully, you know, um things play out for for, for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and so what about your lockdown escape bucket list? What's at the top of that? Oh, there's many. There's many. Um, I think what was I? I think I was on five cancelled holidays throughout lockdown. So um, 
yeah that's been um yeah so I had Cypress um in there um I had we had Lanzarote we had a road trip around Ireland um Berlin so yeah it's um there's been a few um that's been cancelled so um just not long back from a road trip um to England where we did I think it was about 12 stops in all um Isle of Wight was our fight sort of as we say, final destination before we had to turn back. I mean, we couldn't really go much further in the UK, but <laughs> um, and that was absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Loved it down there. We did Bristol, we did Bath, um, Chester, um, Oxford. So we did quite a lot, um, and I've actually quite enjoyed that. And the year before, we did um, part of the North Coast 500. Just sort of, sort of did a drive because most places were shut because um, it was last summer. But um, and then the fog came in, so we just turned back, um, and then we did Sky as well. So that's been that's been really really nice. Um, but no, there's there's so many places um, that all at home and here. So I'd love to do that at Hebrides. Absolutely love to do that. I've always quite fancied. I don't know why. I think I would absolutely hate doing it. But cycling there at Hebrides, I think. The idea would be there, but I think as soon as I started doing it, I'd be like, why? What have I started? Mm-hmm. Um, I also thought cycling on the Isle of Wight might have been fun, but actually going to the Isle of Wight was, uh, I was like, no, no, that's not happening. It's so hilly. It's so hilly. Uh-uh. Um, I like an easy bike ride. Um, so, yeah, so there's that sort of outer Hebrides. And then there's probably, uh, I'd love to go to Vietnam. It's probably one of the big ones for me. Mm. Um, yeah there's so much to see and do there but yeah working in a travel agency is, you just want to go everywhere you just want to go everywhere um, I was doing a deal I can imagine for, actually, yeah, yeah. sorry carry on no no you're alright I was doing a I've, deal for um, on our Facebook and it was just this place in Crete and oh my god the photos were just gorgeous and I was like this is going to be something that's way 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 out of my budget and then I was like oh actually no it's not mm should we book this but uh no I've kind of I've kind of held off I'm still sort of waiting to see um but we'll have to do um it was my boyfriend's big birthday um in February so we were meant to go to Berlin so we'll have to do that at the nearest point that we are we're allowed to um we'll need to um do that I've promised yeah. so I can imagine every phone call you get from somebody to book trips makes you go, oh, I've never been there. Oh, that's they're doing that and that together. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Or yeah. as you say, when you're posting things on social media. Wow. Yeah. No, there's not enough holiday leave in the year for all no, the places no, probably not. you want to go. No, there's not. Um, and, and I mean, another place, I mean, I went, um, I was quite lucky and I got um, a trip to South Korea through work. Um um coming up to 10 years ago actually now um which was called it was called um familiarization trips or fam trips industry calls them mm-hmm. and it basically like a hotel and the airline takes you um but it was six days just world just whirlwind trip around nice. south Korea. it was amazing um and i absolutely loved it but a lot of the stuff because it was such a quick trip and obviously jet lag and everything like that um i'd love to go back there but I couldn't experience, I mean, I stayed in like five star hotels and there were like the like super duper deluxe room and things like that. And I flew business out first class back. Oh, like nice. I, you can never, do you know what I mean? It's never going to be some like, do I go or is that going to spoil the, <laughs> the memories? <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> in these amazing hotels, it's just not going to happen. So, yeah. Um, or the, the flights or anything like that. Um, but yeah that was an experience um I'd love to do that and then I also went just what November 2019 so just not long before lockdown um I went to Malaysia um to Kuala Lumpur um on a business trip but also ta- tagged in a few days and loved it out there as well so yeah there's loads of places that I've kind of gone and sort of done a bit of a world a whirlwind trip and gone do you know what I would love a bit more time again work was paying for it so you're like oh I don't know if I'd be able to afford such luxuries <laughs> so is it going to be the same so yeah um but yeah I think Vietnam's always been um one that's a standout for me that I've always wanted to do so 
One day, maybe. One day. (laughs) So what is the best piece of advice you've ever received and why? I'm not sure I've ever, I've never really had advice. Um, It's going to sound really strange, but I've never had anybody kind of mentor me or take me under their wing or anything like that. I've kind of been very much um, independent and kind of, I always say I was dead lucky to end up where I am um, because like the travel industry is very much, you know, how many years you've done. So it's usually older people end up in the sort of the 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 higher end job so I I always go I'm dead lucky but actually you know I've worked my backside off to get to get Mm -hmm. here and um so yeah I think like I've kind of learned as I've gone on from other people so I've kind of learned um in another job how not to sell a travel you know travel services to a company I've seen I've seen how bad it can you know it turns out um and actually working on that account as as a travel consultant, I've worked on that and realised, well, actually, that's not how you sell kind of thing. So I very much I've learned from that side of things. And I think kind of from a very young age, I kind of understood that, you know, you have to work kind of hard. Um, you know, I, I remember like my dad working overtime and stuff, and that was to pay for the holidays or to pay for Christmas. So I think obviously as a young, as you know, young, I kind of realised, oh, you know, well okay to get money I think but obviously as I've kind of you need to work hard but as I've kind of grown up I've understood that well, actually there's more to it than the money there's the experience and the the, the pride in a job well done and things like that so but yeah I kind of I, I very much early on learned that you know quite a high work ethic I kind of learned from that at a very young age um, and yeah I've, I've always kind of I think this is probably the first time in a long, long time, I've not juggled two jobs. I've always had two jobs oh. until until I kind of worked at DPNL. I think it was one Christmas where I, I worked at Tesco. But other than that, it's been the first time I've never had two jobs. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a workaholic, I think, to be honest. I need help. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've always kind of I just quite a high work ethic and just want you know want a sense of pride I think and that's where I get my pride from is a job well done so yeah I've kind of learned that from from my parents to be honest um but yeah I, do, I think the only good advice I've ever gotten from a team leader was enjoy it because it's the most time you ever spend is at work um and that's something that I've I've passed on now um being a manager and being you know leading a team is enjoy it and if there's not, if you're not enjoying it, right? What can we do to to make it enjoyable? But uh, other than that, yeah, um, I've had quite shocking advice. <laughs> I would say. Um, I remember it's my, teaching you what not to do. Well, well, one of my last team leaders. This was when I worked in Glasgow, and it was very much, you know, to get anywhere in the travel agent in, industry, you need to move about. You need to move to different companies. I mean, that's quite a rife thing in the big cities is you every travel consultant will move about to different companies. So everybody knows everybody. But to get she said, to get anywhere and get a higher pay, that's what you need to do. And I thought, that's not right. That's there's, there's something wrong there when that's the case. But yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think that was about the only advice apart from enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get the second one for sure definitely because because yeah. you're right that you know you have to really have a passion and enjoy what yeah. you're doing otherwise you know um, and maybe yeah maybe the people haven't enjoyed what they've done and that's why they've moved around but what about the other side of the, the question then Amy so do you have a message for people out there about the things you've learned yourself about the world of working business that you would share yeah so I mean like I say I, I've always shared that enjoy yourself um, because I mean, like like I said earlier, you know, you spend the most time um, at work, so enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I think just um, I've kind of learned again to be transparent and open and honest about things, and I've always sort of said that that needs to be the case. Um, and yeah, just transparency and integrity is such a key thing. Um, but yeah, for me, what I've uh, what I've found and what I now enjoy doing is sort of going in and speaking to 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 like students to DYW and things like that, and sharing that, um, you know, 
sharing the in, you know about the industry or sharing about how to work and you know I, I actually really enjoy that so yeah I've been I've been doing that obviously I haven't been doing that in a long time because of Covid but you know before that and I'm hoping to um, get back in when schools come back as well so yeah I do enjoy that um, and uh, yeah get a bit of a buzz from that and I enjoy because I think because I never really had it when I was at school um, I never had careers advice I wanted I actually wanted to be a podiatrist initially um, and then was never allowed to get work experience at school they would never sign a slip for work experience so because I was in too high of a class um, and I would miss out so now that schools have changed and that you know and you're allowed to kind of go in and speak to people about it um I quite enjoy that and like I I never did university I went straight from school to a job to a junior position and worked my way up so again that's nowadays quite a quite a unique thing so um yeah I, I do enjoy enjoy going in and sort of sharing that story and sharing that you don't have to go down the traditional route to to, to get to where I am now um so yeah that's kind of yeah what I enjoy doing now yeah well that's a really nice way to finish so thank you so much um but my last question I, I haven't to forget this how do people get in touch with you if you fancy a chat you fancy a chat um yeah just drop me either an email or find me on linkedin or they can phone phone the office and things like that there'll be there's ways to get a hold of me <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they can always come in and see you in St Andrews can't they well they can they can yeah I mean I'm in there about 50% of the time at the moment um so yeah they can pop in at St Andrews as well um I'll usually be floating about at some point yeah <laughs> and let's hope networking is back before very long because you know we we are you know not unrestricted completely but we're definitely no. getting getting back to um some sense of normality aren't we and, yeah. and now that you've joined the ranks of the double jab like the, the old folk <laughs> like me then soon we'll, we'll be fine uh, yeah so, you know it's it's living with this and actually getting back to yeah um some kind of sense of normality that's that's going to get, get us through the, the rest of this year and um yeah. it, you know the rest of this year and next year will be a challenging one and um, particularly for your industry and I think it's really important that we all you know make our plans get traveling again and actually you know use the vaccine and use the fact that we have got that um, protection to get out and, and get moving again so yes. um, Amy thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on and, and taking the time to be interviewed I really do appreciate it Um for those of you that are watching us on the YouTube channel or on the website and um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch Amy and her interview if you fancy being uh, featured then please just get in touch with us we'd love to see some more people take a seat with us so um, Amy thank you very much again and enjoy the rest of your day yeah thank you take care speak to you later bye